think creatine's just for bodybuilders. <sighs> think again. Creatine does way more than just help us lifting weights. It helps your brain, supports heart health, improves blood sugar control, and fights muscle loss, especially as you age. Studies show it boosts energy in your cells, improves recovery, and may even protect against insulin resistance. And no, it doesn't damage your kidneys. That's a myth. Decades of research prove it's safe for healthy people. This is lecture 106 of the Metabolic Classroom. Looking to improve your own metabolic health? Visit InsulinIQ.com for courses, coaching, consultations, and a 10-day free community membership trial. To dive deep into the science behind metabolic health, become an insider at BenBickman.com, where you'll enjoy my exclusive content, ad-free podcasts, live stream Q&A access, and more. Welcome to the Metabolic Classroom. I'm Benjamin Bickman, a biomedical scientist and professor of cell biology. Today, we're learning about one of the most fascinating molecules in human physiology, creatine. You have most certainly heard of creatine, but this molecule is so much more than a gym bro supplement. It's actually a critical player in energy metabolism, even now as you're sitting and listening to this, with benefits spanning muscle power, brain function, and even a little bit of metabolic health. As I mentioned a moment ago, you are actually even now benefiting from the presence of creatine in your body. It is a naturally occurring compound found in cells throughout the body. Chemically, when you make it, it's derived from three amino acids, arginine, glycine, and methionine. And your body will make it about a couple grams a day, mostly in the liver and in the kidneys. But you can also get it from food and supplements, which we'll cover soon. But here's where it gets interesting. It, it's that creatine's primary role is as a rapid response energy buffer in cells, especially in cells with high energy demands, like the exercising muscle or even the neurons of the thinking brain. To understand this, we need to talk about ATP, which stands for adenosine triphosphate. It is the cell's energy currency. Now, we often, we academics, we professors like to refer to ATP as an energy currency because it is the money or the currency with which a cell will purchase something to get done. It's, it is the medium of exchange where when your muscles constrict, uh, constrict or your brain fires a neuron, ATP will break down into ADP, adenosine diphosphate. And that bond that breaks is considered a high energy bond. And then some other reaction can take advantage of that breaking of the bond. But as we break those bonds, we can start to get low on ATP. ATP stores within a cell are limited. And during something like, say, intense activity, like a sprint or a heavy lift, or even intense thinking, you may deplete your ATP. This is where we have an intracellular rescuer, creatine phosphate. Once it's phosphorylated, the molecule creatine becomes creatine phosphate. And creatine phosphate is a donor. It is just standing by ready to donate its phosphate to ADP, which instantly generates ATP again. So we had an ATP molecule break down and give its energy, if you will, to some other reaction, like contracting a muscle, giving us then ADP, the triphosphate, turned into the diphosphate, three to two. And then creatine phosphate says to the diphosphate, hey, you're missing a phosphate. I have one that you can take, and gives up its own phosphate. This process is catalyzed by an enzyme called creatine kinase. Now, remember, anytime you hear a molecule that ends with the A-S-E ending, A's is going to be an enzyme. And creatine kinase is lightning fast, and it allows the cells to keep producing this ATP during these very short, intense bursts. So think of creatine phosphate as a backup battery that kicks in when the main power grid, ATP in this case, starts to run low. 